Okay. Okay, I will introduce the next uh, speaker, uh, Yu Tingguo. Uh, he will give another talk, uh, US guided video drainage with new design metallic stand. Uh, Dr. Go, please. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Wang, uh, my teachers. Uh, 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 so I, I will, because of time's limit, I just uh, following, uh, the following the top, topic is U.S. guide beer journey. Uh, as you know, the beer abstraction, we have the several uh, modality to, 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 to perform. The first is cutaneous, and the narrow in the past is the operation. And uh, in mostly we will use the ERCP to place the uh, internal standing. Uh, but sometimes uh, in this kind of case, we will difficult to perform the ERCP, just like a very big uh, embryo tumor. And uh, sometimes we, we cannot know the, the actual oral phase. So this kind of patient, we fail to, uh, to do an ERCP. So the ERCP around, uh, according to a reported, uh, the, <laughs> the, 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 the Around the five to seven percent in, in even experienced uh, endoscopies, they will fail. And the reason is uh, for many kinds of reason. Uh, I will say uh, two type is the papilla accessible and the papilla uh, inaccessible. Papilla accessible is uh, very, uh, just like a diverticulum or uh, or just like uh, our very huge the tumor or in the very difficult beer structure cannot success the guy why. And the, another part is uh, we cannot reach the papilla, maybe get your obstruction or the post-surgery is a very difficult or press the duodenal stent. So in that case, maybe we can choose a repeat ERCP, but I think it's also will fail. In the, another, you can choose the percutaneous. I think uh, in the usually clinical practice we will press, but uh, you 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 will you 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 will totally agree. They will decrease the life quality of the patient if the in the uh, terminal or malignant patients. And the, another part is the surgery. But I think uh, up to now, not so many patients will choose these kinds of modalities. So now we we use the US and the combines the ERCP. So we can maybe we can solve these kinds of problems. So this, we call out US guided behavior intervention. Actually, they will separate different kinds of methods. I will, I will, I will separate to, uh, to introduce. The first is a uh, transpapillary route. It means that uh, you puncture no matter in the uh, HD or CBD, CHD, and then uh, you press the guide Y, and uh, then the, your stain will transpapillary, is called a transpapillary route. And another is the not the guy why not uh, cross the papilla is cause the transmural root. We we have the US CDS, HGS, or HDS. In uh, in up to now have some uh, not so many uh, papers to randomized control trial to compare USBD versus uh, traditional percutaneous or surgery bypass. Only three papers they will compare US guide. Uh, with the percutaneous. It's a comparable technique and a clinical success way. And there's some paper, because in uh, they find that the US guide the uh, adverse effect is lower than uh, per percutaneous. And only one paper compare US guide with the surgery. And uh, they also find that uh, in this paper is a very similar adverse effect and a similar uh, success rate, but it's a very, uh, it's around uh, uh, six years ago, the uh, papers. So, so I want to summary, uh, the meta-analysis also highlight that the US guide beer journey is very, uh, have a high technique success and uh, acceptable adverse effect in experienced endo US endoscopist. So the indication, I think that just like I talked about, if you meet the fail case in the traditional ERCP, maybe you can consider it to perform the US guide beer drainage. Uh, the transitional step, uh, the US guide beer drain is a step by step. Usually you, you need the netting gauge needle to puncture and advance the guide wire inside the lumen. And then you can you need to exchange the guy wire, uh, exchange the needle uh, 
to place the dilate, dil dilatation, uh, uh, check dil dilatation uh, device. And then you can exchange the dilatation device to the stand. Then, and uh, we finish this uh, whole procedure. It's a state by state uh, of the US guide beer drainage. Sometimes this part is the most uh, challenge because uh, sometimes you exchange your device, some will bow leak and uh, will your, your, your window or your device will dislodgement. If, uh, if you meet the, if you want to perform USBD, uh, you, if the HD is very dilate, you, you can consider use the HGS. But uh, if the HD is not so dilate, it's uh, dilate only in the CBD or CHD, you can consider to perform a USCDS or of course, or anti gray or rendezvous will, 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 will be your the choice. So what is the US guide rendezvous technique? Uh, I will show uh, the, this one video for you. Uh, this is also very uh, swirling, this a very swirling uh, papillate and uh, we cannot assess the accumulations. So, okay, so we change uh, the US scope. In the US scope and uh, we inject the contrast, uh, and press the guide wire to manu uh, manipulate the guide wire to into the uh, papillate and uh, press the, the longer uh, guide wire inside so that we can exchange uh, US uh, scope to ERCB scope. Usually we will try to cannulations uh, surrounding the guide, guide wire, we will try. If fail, is change your capacitors. And uh, fortunately we successed uh, and we place the plastic stand inside. This is called the rendezvous technique. And the, another, tra another transproper route is the called the EUS guide anti gray standing. Just like the, I mentioned the first in, our, in my uh, slides before. So we fill the ERCP and we also puncture the CBD on the, on the US image and uh, inject the contrast. And you can see some many big stone because it's uh, emperor cancer patient, uh, 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 this uh, not a great uh, operation. So the first uh, we also, we use the uh, angle tip the guide wire, try to select the cannulation into, uh, into a papilla. And then because it's a malignant uh, inoperable uh, case, so we place the uh, anti gray standing, um, bitter metal standing, because you can see the, the current in the duodenal part. So we, we, can we can suggest this part is the uh, duodenal lumen. And uh, so we choose the proper uh, length of the stand to underflow to deploy the stand inside. And this is called anti gray standing. And uh, actually, you can find out all of this is here. So we guess, guess the wrong area before uh, uh, during we perform ERCP. Okay, the, another method is uh, transmural route is called a CDS. CDS is, uh, okay, so uh, this is a uh, post uh, neuron coin tumor post. Uh, surgery with recurrence of CBD uh, obstruction. Also, you can see that's a very prominent emperor. So we also, usually we will try ESCP first and fail. If we discuss with patient, they agreed, we can, uh, we can perform this kind of procedure at the same times. And uh, we inject the contrast and the same, uh, just press the guide white inside. But this size we guide white press in the HD part. And uh, usually you need to choose the uh, fully cover or partially cover. In this case, we choose a partially cover because they can they have a membrane to prevent the BRE leakage. And uh, another part is uh, well, is uh, less uh, migration compared to fully cover stem. So I end up finish this uh, procedure. These are CDS procedures. Okay. 
And the, another case is also is a primary cancer. We also cannot uh, arrive to papilla. So we also perform a CBS. I want to show this, uh, the video is, uh, the, the former part is very similar, so I want to skip. The, the mostly, sometimes we use this kinds of partially covered stain. Sometimes we will encounter some problems because uh, sometimes uh, it's uh, not very designed for CBS stain. So the flange of the bilateral uh, stain is not so big enough. So sometimes we, are, we were very afraid of internal migration to peritoneum. So sometimes we use need to some uh, double PTL to anchor in this kind of uh, uh, stent in CBS, just like this one. Okay, HGS. HGS is uh, uh, the puncture size in the stomach. And in this case, we puncture in the uh, segment three and uh, we use a guy -wide. The guy -wide can pass through the higher, higher, high, uh, go into the HD. However, the dilatation catheter is very, is very stiff, cannot pass through. So actually in, the, in our first plan, we maybe we will prefer to place the uh, anti-grade standing. However, the dilatation burden can, dilatation catheter cannot pass. So we change our plan to place uh, HGS. So you can see that uh, this kind of HGS is a higher stand. Maybe that I will introduce this. Have a two mark. This is on um, cover part, and uh, the the other part is uh, fully covered, and they have a uh, bigger the uh, the head uh, in the French. They can prevent the uh, the migrations. I think that I want to uh, uh, share some of the tips for USBD. I think the most important part is try try your best to stabilize your scope to keep the axis of puncture lines always in the US image. Uh, in our centers, usually we will uh, ask our assistants uh, to hold the scope to always to keep the, the axis of a puncture line appears in the US image. And uh, the second part, uh, especially for HGS, I think the shape of endoscope is uh, very important. This is uh, uh, Dr. Okula's uh, papers. They, they find that the the angles of between the FNA needle and the, the scope is very important. But I think the most important part is the punctures, puncture duct and the, the needle is very important. If too acute, sometimes it's very difficult to uh, manip manipulate your guy white. Uh, so usually we, in the, uh, according to his paper, uh, uh, he will uh, prefer the angle above the uh, 135 uh, is more large angle and is more be successful guy wire manipulations. And then the third part one is uh, very important is the guy wire uh, manipulation. Usually we will choose the angle tip the, and uh, sometimes we will have a very uh, uh, stiffness to can support the device in and out. And uh, this is also uh, Dr. Okuna's uh, paper. Sometimes we will we will meet why we use the angle tip because sometimes we can shape the the, the tip and uh, this way is to the higher 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 direction and then sometimes uh, we will we will have some uh, guy wide sharing experience so so according to his paper they will use a call that liver impaction technique uh, he will withdraw the the needle. And uh, keep the needle, the tip of a needle in the parenchyma, and uh, this this part use the parenchyma to protect the guy wire to avoid uh, guy wire sharing. And another another technique, maybe you can choose this kind of uh, cook echo tip ultra high divisions uh, FNA needle because uh, after puncture you can withdraw this uh, style. This style is bivalve uh, bivalve uh, style very sharp. After you remove, you can you can avoid uh, avoid the uh, guy sharing the condition. And uh, the fourth part is very important: is track dilation. This is uh, also is a very important issue in Taiwan because uh, we we in Taiwan up to now we don't have a very good uh, track dilatation uh, device. Uh, 
uh, in Japan, they have a zero, uh, zero company yes director, or just like uh, Rain, that it is very useful uh, directions, uh, the device. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, you, if you use uh, just like a Cook or Sohendra, or sometimes it's very difficult. So we hope uh, very soon uh, in this end of year or uh, next year, we can have the, the license of a yes data can, can approve and we can use in Taiwan. And uh, according to Ido Sensei's their, uh, their study, they find that they comparing uh, yes data and the uh, system tone, they find that uh, cautery director have a more a higher breeding risk compared to mechanical director. But in our opinion, sometimes it, mechanical dilator will still fail and uh, still need cautery dilator. So usually we will try to use a mechanical dilator first. You fail and uh, you can shift to cautery dilator. Okay. And uh, the, the, an, another important part is the optimal BR stand. You need to choose a longer, longer lens to prevent internal migration because sometimes, uh, and, uh, and I will show our, uh, our bad experience in uh, this displacements of the uh, uh, stand in HGS. And uh, so now uh, in according to our bad experience, so I, I will prefer to have some anti-migrations that designs the stand will, will better the choice. Uh, just like these ones uh, have anti-migration and uh, some, uh, of course, uh, uh, high issues is also can available use in uh, CDS. So this is uh, Nakai Sensei's uh, their study. They find that the, uh, in, their, in, in their center, very high technique and the clinical success rate is very, very excellent and a very uh, acceptable uh, complication rate. And the, an, another important issue, they find that the short, length, uh, short stand length will cause more higher risk of the reintervention rate. So they will suggest the intragatory stand length above the uh, three, uh, 35 millimeter is around the three to four, four centimeters in the intragatory area. So this is uh, our uh, one case. This, uh, we placed the two prostate stand in right interior and the left, left the HD, but the patient want to change the right posterior branch uh, into an internal drainage. So, so we, we, we have to discuss with the patients. So we perform the HGS uh, to a right posterior branch. Unfortunately, uh, we puncture into a bowel duct and uh, we inject the guy wire and uh, we dilate successfully and uh, smoothly. And then we place the nine centimeters uh, partially covered stand. However, because it's a uh, puncture to from stomach to right and to your right posterior branch. I think nine centimeters stand maybe is not enough, uh, enough uh, longer enough. So after, after placement, we try our breast to keep more in the, in the intragatory part. However, you can see that the uh, only small part in the intragatory area. So, we prevent internal migration, so we place the uh, double pigtail at the last times. Okay, unfortunately, and uh, one day later, the patient complained of abdominal pain. Uh, we uh, suggest the uh, uh, CT also show that internal migration with some biotic. So, so in this kinds the. Uh, conditions we we cannulation, press the gawai first, and then we remove the uh, prostate stain, and then we press uh, another second uh, fully covered second fully covered uh, the metal stain. So we press the gawai first, and uh, we slowly to withdraw the uh, double pigtail and then press the secondary uh, fully covered metal stain. And uh, fortunately, this uh, patient was solved by this uh, uh, second, second stain. So just like the Professor Nakai's the, the study result, I think uh, is in this kind, if you don't have anti-migration, uh, 
migratory uh, design, I think the place the longest thing is the more safe. So uh, fortunately, we have uh, this uh, MITEC stand in this year. So this, this stand is very special design is the anti-migration system that can prevent internal migration. And uh, another part that they, in the X-ray, they have a two marker. This two marker is, uh, this means the uncovered part. They have a uh, eight lens and the 10 lens, uh, this kind of stand. And the off lens is the uh, three centimeters, the lens is the uncovered part. So uh, I, I want to show this kind of case we use to this the HANO stand. This is the Embra, Embra tumors case. And uh, you can, Embra cancer with liver metastasis is unresectable. And uh, also we fail to uh, accumulation and then we press the, we perform the CDAs and then we press the guide Y first to the right HD. And uh, we use the cystotome to dilate the tract. And then we press uh, 10 centimeters hano stand. You can see this two marker is the uncovered part. And you, you need to make sure the two markers inside the bio duct to let the cover part to cover the fistula tract. And you can see that it's, it's op opened. And another, another point is because this uh, 10 centimeters is very longer. So we puncture size the bulb. So try your best to, to because we deploy the stain in the intra channel. So we try our best to change our scope into a second portion to make the alignment of a stain can flow in the second portion. You can see we try to change our scope position and the lane will make the alignment is more smoothly into a second portion. Otherwise, they will into an entrance, they will cause the flow impatient if you, you will do, not do, do so. So this is after uh, three days, there is fully expansion. And the last part, I think the intra, intra, intra scope channel with this technique is very important. Why I say that? Because this is our first uh, terrible case. Uh, we actually, we don't have much experience. So this is our first uh, HGS case. Uh, in the first part, we all very smoothly, we can puncture it and we can press them very smoothly. And the uh, final step, we press the, oh, oh, also is a hard roll stand. And you can see that two marker is the uncovered part. But a lot of times we did not know use this kind of intra-channel deploy uh, technique. So after deploy to the uncovered part into the partially cup to a fully covered cup, and we change to the endoscope view. However, while we deploy it, when the, the stand will put inside very quickly. So we can now fold in uh, at the same time. So you can see that the, actually the stain will deploy in the intraperitoneum. It's a very terrible uh, experience. So the first uh, we try to use uh, uh, forceps to grasp, to grab, to grasp per uh, this uh, migrated uh, uh, HGS stain, but it's failed. So finally we that patient to, to receive operation. And you can see that uh, this uh, arrow stand in, uh, in, in the peritoneum. And all of my friends, our friends, the surgeon click to try to find that we puncture root. And uh, at a lot of times, I also at the operation, and I use endoscope and uh, try to let it find that the root and I use alligator. And uh, he helped me to catch this the stand to put inside to a uh, original hole. And uh, the finally, the the patients uh, the fixes with the uh, the needle to fix the this stain. And uh, actually, I think the patient is quite good up to now. The stain is uh, still have a good good function. So so now so now uh, this is uh, last week, uh, this week we performed the case the GS case. So. We have a bad uh, experience. So now we will 
use uh, in chat. I will skip. So now we will try to uh, release the stand in the intra channel. And after deployment, I will slightly restore uh, the scope and the push, push, push to the, the stand. And I think it's, a, it's very safe and it can prevent an, an uh, internal migration. So, so because time is limited, I will skip uh, the, the final some slides. So I, I want to summary. Your sky the beer journeys is a very promising, and uh, but uh, these kinds the uh, beer journeys are sometimes is still technical challenge, especially in the US HGS. So you need to have uh, uh, very good assistance to help you, and uh, you you need to teamwork with a radiologist and a surgeon to to back up of you. And uh, the most important, you need to have very dedicated device and a stand. Okay, thank you very your attention, thank you. Uh, thanks, Yutin, uh, talk. I think there's a lot of a question from last talk to this talk. <clears throat> so I, I think